O'Brien. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here for Tom O'Brien. This is the three o'clock show, and my usual show is the Tiger Technicians Hour, ten o'clock to eleven o'clock. And my opening call newsletter is my daily newsletter that goes out to subscribers every market day. And on the weekends, I like to I spend about an hour doing an overview uh, on the what's happened, what we're looking at, what stocks we are looking at, what positions we want to take for the coming week, what's the outlook. And just to go with that, I may as well do this right now. I'm doing on tomorrow night, in fact, I'm doing a webinar. Uh, it's called, it's for opening call subscribers. You can become a subscriber. It's easy enough. You can sign up. That means you'll you'll pay the fee, but it's it's refundable. If you're not happy after a, the month, you can just call up and you, you just cancel. So it's Tuesday, March the 19th at 4 p.m. Technical tools needed for the coming few months. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about the technical tools is I want to talk about the technical tools, um, how the weekly charts are signaling that there should still be higher highs to come. Where do I anticipate that there'll be a problem? And what the socioeconomic aspect uh, that I always like to talk about that has to do with skyscrapers and all other things like that. I'm going to be talking about the number of the plethora of round numbers. It's just incredible that we, the number of round numbers we've seen. Also, sector rotation, stock selection, live questions and answers. But let me just show you something right here. So this is the Dow, uh, up 155. Look, the technical so far are pretty good. The nine period moving average is over the 14, but the MACD is starting to decline. The stochastic is declining. On balance volume is declining. Relative strength is declining. The one indicator called the indicator of last resort is the 914, and it's still holding good in the daily chart, very strong in the weekly charts, all of them. Look at the S&P, SPX.X, there we go. Holding really well, prices way above the 9 in the in the daily chart. The 9 is over the 14, the little black line there. This is in the inside track uh, propellant zone. It's right in the upper part of it. The MACD is starting to weaken. The stochastic uh, is weakening at 70%. I love over 80%. I really think over 90%. Fabulous. That's what you want to see in a bull phase. On balance from the blue lines coming down. Uh, so I, I'm kind of... We've got some short positions, even a long uh, intermediate term and long term, we're still very bullish. Just on the shorter term, we, uh, we've got these positions and um, they're kind of working. And what can I say? 438.95, up five on the QQQ. You can see very close to that 9P moving average flipping. It hasn't yet, but it looks like it could turn a negative. Weekly chart is going to peak C. I'll just I'll explain that a little later on. Just basically in the Chapman Wave uh, methodology, when I get a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode, it says you should get to at least four higher peaks. Going peak A is the first, B second, C is the third, and then at least a D. And then you have to assess what's going on. Look at the IWM, the Russell 2000. Still, real no sign of leadership there. They've done okay, but they haven't done great. Not like the other indices. Let's go to gold. Gold itself is trading quite nicely up two and a half. When you consider the spectacular move from the 200 period moving average in the day, look at that. That orange line, whoosh, should go straight up from the 2000 level right to the 2200. Now it's pulling back 2163, no big deal, but it has taken one, two, three, four, five sessions to consolidate. You're using time rather than price, holding steady here, holding the uh, inside track propellant zone uh, in the weekly chart, and it's at the peak C. There should still be a leg D to come. Looking at uh, silver, here we go, silver is trading. Um, we've got it down 12 cents at 25.25. This is a peak C. As I say, there should be a leg D still to come. Weekly chart says, hey, this is very nice. We've seen a lot of these U-shaped patterns uh, retrace and then fail. But so far, the technicals in the daily chart are holding very nicely. High-grade copper had a really screamer of a, of a few days. And now it's still higher, 4.13, up 0 0.008. Uh, this is very nice, very strong action in the daily and the weekly. Monthly says, oh, yeah, we need a lot more before we're impressed. Let's go to um, the bonds. And the bonds, and this is going to be very interesting because bonds are down. That means yields are, yeah, are rallying. Uh, is the Fed, what, what is the Fed going to say? I mean, we can see that there are inflationary aspects still around. If you look at crude oil, crude oil is, is pushing higher. That's usually a sign of some kind of inflation. Remember, crude oil is... It filters into everything that we have, um, it just put the petroleum products. I consider that the petroleum products of the 21st century are the 
the chips of the new oils of the 1900s, the era of 1900, 2000. We've now gone to chips and chips are everywhere. And look at the chips, uh, the SMHs, kind of stalling at a beautiful rally to 239.14 a week and a half ago. Now it's at 219, not a big deal, but it really is struggling. And it just says to me that and this is what my uh, webinar is going to be about, this rotation from one sector to the other. Look at this BTC. BTC, Bitcoin futures, did a beautiful cup formation. It goes all the way from the 70,000s down to under 20,000, then back to the 70,000s, a new all-time high. Of this is a leg C. That means there should still be a D in this year, 2024, Bitcoin futures. But it's got a little doji candle with a peak E right here. It's got this uh, topping formation uh, in the daily chart. Does this mean that Bitcoin could finally have a bit of a breather? Bitcoin bit, bit breather? Um, we'll see because... It's been spectacular. Look at this run. I mean, just uh, almost a double in in a month and a half. So is it also due for some kind of a, a break? What happens during the break? What's going to take the place of where will money go? Where will fund managers go if they take money out? Well, maybe they'll move back from uh, from the Bitcoin, go back into the gold. Well, we don't know, do we? Because look, the dollar is acting well. EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair. It's kind of struggling here under the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. Yet the USD JPY, that's the uh, yen, it's doing quite nicely. Look at that, it keeps coming back towards the 150s. There's a 149.11 right now. So this is going to be a very interesting end of going into the end of March, beginning of February, all of Fe I'm sorry, April. April is going to be quite, a, quite an interesting month I, as far as I can see. So with that said, I wanted to do one other thing. I did, that. Um, I did the crude oil. Oh, the VIX index. Someone asked me about the VIX index. Yeah, look at the VIX index. It's been using this platform, this rising inside track propellant zone as a platform. It says that fund managers are starting to buy some insurance. It's at 1429 in the lower range. But you can see, look, every week, higher lows and not always higher highs, but yeah, mostly higher highs. So it just says, be a little careful here. If there is a rotation, usually as rotations occur, you get some kind of a market pullback, and then you start to see which sectors are going to be. I'll be back in a moment, and I believe I'm going to check to see. I think I might have uh, Steve Rhodes coming in. Uh, I hope so. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom and Brian Dallas up 152, S&P's up 43. We'll be right